getting started in just a moment. admitting people to All right, so we're going to get started. Thank you all for being here today. This is the first of hopefully many um, interactive virtual events where we hope to um, educate you all about some changes coming to SNAP. Uh, my name is Kayla. I am the SNAP and Seniors Professional Network Coordinator. I am joined here today by some of my colleagues, Sherry Tomaski, as well as Jennifer Matrazo. So you may hear from the, them at some point today. So today's session is how to maximize SNAP for seniors. Jen, if you could go to the next slide. Before we get started, um, I wanted to take a moment to thank our funder, the AARP Foundation. Um, this network was created as a response to the growing number of eligible yet unenrolled seniors accessing SNAP. Um, the network will also be providing information and helping raise awareness of some SNAP changes that will impact seniors. Um, before we begin, I wanted to give a little bit of background on Hunger Solutions New York. Um, we are a statewide mission-driven organization. We focus our efforts on increasing awareness of, support for, and participation in federal nutrition assistance programs. Efforts include a combination of community-based services, statewide services, as well as administrative and legislative advocacy. We manage programs to provide direct client assistance at the local level. We also serve as a program resource for individuals, organizations, and agencies to help promote federal, state, and local policies that contribute to ending hunger. Um, some things on our agenda today, we will be reviewing uh, some goals of the network. We will also review SNAP benefits and rules that apply to seniors. We will be just discussing some ways to apply for SNAP, um, as well as some SNAP changes in New York State. And lastly, we will discuss um, what the next, net, next steps of the network will be. So goals of the network, um, we want to connect eligible yet unenrolled seniors to SNAP through education, collaboration, and information sharing. It's estimated that there are nearly 200,000 older New Yorkers that may be eligible for SNAP, but not receiving benefits. This is concerning because the senior population in New York State is expected to grow through 2030. The goal of the SNAP and Seniors Professional Network is to close the participation gap among seniors and SNAP. We established this network to empower community organizations to improve or begin their SNAP outreach and assistance to ensure that eligible, eligible seniors know that SNAP can help them maintain their health and nutrition. We hope to close the participation gap by educating senior service providers about SNAP policies and rules that apply to seniors through collaboration with state and community partners, as well as information sharing among network members to ensure that everyone has the tools they need to connect all eligible yet unenrolled seniors to SNAP. Before we move on, if you could all take a moment to answer our poll question about challenges that seniors may face when accessing SNAP.
So we'll give everyone a minute to answer. All right, got almost everyone answering. We'll just give a couple more seconds. Yes, we can. We only have one option. Um, if there's another option that's not listed, please feel free to write it in the chat. All right, so it looks like almost everyone has participated. I'll just allow for a couple more seconds. Um, it's looking like a lot of folks um, see documentation requirements as a significant challenge, um, as well as difficulty navigating the SNAP process and recertification. Um, access to technology is often a barrier as well. All right, I'm gonna end this poll. So thank you all for taking the time. Um, I will share the results quickly. So it looks like um, the biggest barrier is difficulty navigating the SNAP process and recertification, followed by access to technology, um, concern that they will be taking benefits away from others, documentation requirements, stigma, shame. So a, a lot of, you know, a lot of these issues seem to be barriers to access. So we will move on um, to the next section of our presentation today. So Jen, it should be the um, SNAP and Seniors in New York State slide. Excellent. So for those of you who don't know, SNAP is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. It's the largest federal nutrition program in um, the United States. Each month, millions of families and individuals rely on SNAP to help put food on their tables. Throughout our presentation today, it will be helpful to remember some definitions. Older adults are considered seniors at age 60 for SNAP purposes. A disabled individual is anyone receiving federally related disability benefits, such as social security disability insurance or supplemental security income. Individuals that live together and purchase and prepare food together are considered a household for SNAP purposes. Um, there are many benefits of SNAP. As we know, seniors, a lot of seniors live on a fixed income. About 12% of New York State seniors aged 65 and up live at or below the poverty line. Um, in New York State, 40% of all SNAP households contain a senior. SNAP helps seniors afford nutritious foods each month. Um, SNAP helps seniors age in place and allows them to retain their autonomy and independence when shopping for food. SNAP can help free up money for prescription costs or other important expenses that seniors may forego. SNAP utilization among seniors has been associated with lower healthcare costs and improved nutritional quality. Access to a healthy diet can be helpful to reduce healthcare costs associated with chronic conditions such as high blood pressure and diabetes. Most recently, a study by Benefits Data Trust found that SNAP enrollment among seniors who are dually eligible for Medicaid and Medicare was associated with fewer inpatient hospitalizations, as well as fewer emergency department visits and long-term care admissions. SNAP participation um, led to approximately $2,360 in lower annual Medicaid spending per person. So, you know, the studies are out there. There's a lot of studies that indicate that SNAP is 
um, a really important resource to seniors. Next slide, Jen. So here we have outlined some New York State uh, monthly SNAP benefits. In fiscal year 2019, 575,242 seniors received SNAP benefits. Many people assume that seniors may only receive the minim minimum benefit amount, but many seniors on average receive more than the minimum in their monthly benefits. Um, $20 is the minimum benefit amount for seniors, um, but $158 is the average benefit amount for live alone seniors. Um, Hunger Solutions New York has SNAP application assisters. They're um, called NOAP coordinators. Some of you on the call may be some of our NOAP coordinators in the state. So thank you for being here. Um, but they can help pre-screen and estimate benefits for seniors in your service area. We'll talk a bit more about NOAP, NOAP in the coming slides. Um, it's important to note that these benefits here uh, do not include any of the COVID-19 emergency allotments or pandemic EBT. So we're gonna talk a little bit about some SNAP rules for seniors. Um, first, we're gonna talk about expanded categorical eligibility. If you could go to the next slide, Jen. Um, so expanded categorical eligibility, senior households with a gross income under 200% of the federal poverty limit do not need to meet resource limits or pass the net income test for SNAP. They're considered categorically eligible. Those with income over 200% of the federal poverty limit may still be eligible for SNAP, but only if their resources are below the resource limit and they pass the net income test. So for senior purposes, we will look at the 200% category. Um, as you can see, a family size of two can have a monthly income of up to $2,903 and still meet categorical eligibility guidelines and qualify for SNAP. Um, something important to note is that these guidelines are updated every year on October 1st. Um, we are showing you the newest updated guidelines, um, but should you need them, you know, next year they will be available on our website. Next slide, please. So our next SNAP rule for seniors is a separate household status for elderly and disabled individuals. If a person lives with others and is both elderly and disabled, they may be able to establish a separate household status for SNAP purposes. Um, if the income of their housemates does not exceed 165% of the federal poverty limit, this will allow seniors to meet a higher income test and benefit from these additional rules. Next slide. So now we're gonna be talking about uh, medical deductions. Um, just a quick note on this, um, the medical deduction can be a quite a lengthy um, process. So we really um, won't be giving it the attention or um, justice that it deserves in just this one slide. Um, we are happy to um, help with any technical assistance folks may have in the meantime. I will, um, we can share some contact information later in today's presentation so you can reach out should you have any questions. Um, but the medical expense deduction can help seniors increase their benefit allowance. The SNAP medical deduction is only claimed by about 19% of households with a senior or disabled individual. Some states have opted to adopt a standard medical deduction. New York is unfortunately not one of them. Um, so SNAP does allow households to deduct unreimbursed medical expenses over $35 per month from their income. This deduction may be helpful when calculating net income for SNAP purposes, as it may more realistically reflect the income seniors have available to purchase food. Um, federal SNAP rules require verification of medical expenses, which is usually done at the local DSS or SNAP office. And yes, this does need to be submitted on a monthly basis. Um, the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities states that for a typical live alone senior, claiming $50 to $200 in medical expenses per month may result 
and an additional seven to $69 in SNAP benefits. Though New York State has um, not adopted a standard medical deduction, advocates and application assisters should be informing clients of their option to claim this deduction, as well as the range of allowable expenses that can be deducted. Expenses can include, but are not limited to, dental care, eyeglasses, and health insurance premiums. Some applicants may not be aware of the deduction or eligible expenses or may experience stigma when trying to claim their medical expenses. Advocates can help ensure that eligible households are aware of the medical deduction and help them make full use of it. Again, I wanna note that this slide really does not do the medical deduction justice. Um, it is a really, can be a really difficult process. It does have to be submitted on a monthly basis, um, which can be a barrier for folks. Um, next, we will go over um, some more SNAP rules for seniors. Telephone interviews. Um, so households comprised of all seniors or adults with disabilities and no earned income are granted telephone interviews automatically instead of having to go to the local DSS um, office in person. Next slide, Jen. Um, oops, sorry, go back to, perfect. Um, SNAP applicants can appoint an authorized representative who can apply for SNAP on their behalf, as well as attend the interview and use their EBT card to make purchases if they're approved. This option is available to all SNAP applicants, but is generally most helpful to the elderly and people with disabled. I see a lot of questions in the comments. Um, I'm going to do my best to answer them at the end of our presentation. If you could all just be a little bit patient. Thanks. Um, next slide, Jen. So the final SNAP rule for seniors that we're going to review today is the Senior Farmer Market Nutrition Program, which is really more of an incentive. Um, it's designed to help provide low-income seniors with access to locally grown fruits, vegetables, honey, and herbs. Seniors can get coupon books from their local senior service providers that can be used at farmers markets across the states. Um, coupon books are limited and they do have an expiration date. For more information on that, um, please contact your local county office for the aging. If you're not sure who it might be, um, that is something else we can assist with. Um, just um, connect with me and I will help you connect to the correct person. There may also be other SNAP incentive programs that exist in your area. Some programs are publicly funded, some are privately funded, um, but most of them encourage SNAP customers to spend their benefits at farmer's markets. So now we will review um, how individuals can apply for SNAP in New York State, as well as a, where additional assistance can be found. Um, so you can apply for SNAP many different ways. Um, individuals can apply online, which is the quickest and most efficient way. Um, but as we know, many of our seniors face um, technology barriers. Um, a lot of folks don't have access to internet in New York State. Um, but you can access mybenefits.ny.gov to fill out an application and submit it online. Individuals and providers can also contact NOAA coordinators for additional application assistance. They can help prepare and submit SNAP applications on the client's behalf. Paper applications can be printed and returned in person via fax or mail. Alternative format applications such as audio discs and large print um, applications are available for those that need it as well. If individuals are in need of a braille format, they must submit their request in writing to their local DSS or HRA office. Um, New York State's auto enroll program is called the New York State Nutrition Improvement Project. It auto enrolls live alone seniors on social security income. Um, so NYSNIP will also be converting to NICE CAP at some point. We will review that a little bit later in the slides and talk a little bit more about NYSNIP.
So I wanted to take a couple moments to talk about our nutrition outreach and education program. Hunger Solutions New York manages the um, nutrition outreach and education program. It's one of the largest SNAP outreach projects in the country and has been nationally recognized for its accomplishments. NOAP is funded by the New York State Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance and receives matching funds from the USDA. Currently, NOAP serves 53 of the 62 counties in New York State. The counties in white on this map do not have NOAP services. Um, in these counties, you can, however, contact Hunger Solutions New York for help with SNAP or refer these individuals directly to mybenefits.ny.gov or their local county DSS office. Um, Hunger Solutions New York administers NOPE through contracts with 44 community-based organizations. These organizations collectively employ 66 full-time NOAP coordinators who work in their county or boroughs to provide SNAP outreach and assistance to potentially eligible New Yorkers. In the contract year ending June 30th, 2020, NOAP helped more than 26,000 households receive SNAP benefits. Um, here is a summary of the specific services that you can expect from any of our NOAP coordinators. You can visit foodhelpny.org to look up the contact information for your local NOAP coordinator. So some things NOAP coordinators can help with um, include pre-screening for eligibility and assisting with SNAP applications. They can help gather documents, fill out and submit applications. They can offer translation services, home visits, and in-person visits, as well as email or over the phone assistance. They work with local government offices to ensure each application is processed correctly. They can also help resolve barriers to SNAP participation, assist with recertifications, as well as provide education and other referrals about other nutrition assistance programs, such as summer meals, school meals, and WIC. So next up we have for you is another poll break. You could all take a moment to answer our poll about NOAA. See, almost everyone's participated, so we'll give it just a little bit longer. Okay, so we're looking about half and half here. I'm gonna end the poll and share the results. So 53% of you remembered where in our previous slides where um, folks can go to help find their local NOAA coordinator. For those of you that don't remember, you can go to foodhelpny.org um, to help find your, your local NOAA coordinator. Again, that's foodhelpny.org. All right, and we will move on. Thank you all for taking the time to answer that poll question. So next we're going to talk about some SNAP policy updates in New York State. So many of you may be aware that um, the Thrifty Food Plan was recently increased. Um, that began on October 1st, 2021. In 2018, the Farm Bill established a new requirement for USDA to reevaluate the Thrifty Food Plan on a regular basis using specific criteria. 
This initial reevaluation was directed to occur prior to 2022 and will be hopefully reevaluated every five years. Um, in August, the USDA announced the increase to the Thrifty Food Plan, which began on October 1st. The Thrifty Food Plan is the calculation that USDA utilizes to determine SNAP benefits. The cost of the Thrifty Food Plan is based on a family of four, defined by law as consisting of a man and a woman, both age 20 through 50, and two children. One ages uh, between six and one through eight, and one um, ages nine through 12. The plan also takes into account factors such as food availability and affordability, as well as time required to prepare food. This is a welcomed change to assist millions of low-income individuals put food on their table through the SNAP program, but many art advocates argue it's still not enough largely because it does not consider things such as dietary need or adequate and affordable transportation that individuals may require to get to and from the grocery store. So the increase um, to the SNAP thrifty food plan is modest but meaningful. Um, SNAP benefits will increase by 21%, raising the average benefit from about $4.25 per person per day to about $5.45 per person per day. Um, this all began on October 1st. So our next slide has a handy little um, visual to help us understand the increase of the thrifty food plan, as well as some of the um, extra COVID allotments. The USDA created this visual, which helps il illustrate the change in SNAP benefits. It considers the pandemic changes, as well as the new thrifty food plan increase. We'll discuss emergency allotments in our next few slides, um, but without extra pandemic benefits and the thrifty food plan increase, benefits would have been lower at around $133 per person per month. Average pre-pandemic benefits were $121 per person. Pandemic aid, including the 15% boost and emergency allotments increased average benefits to $240 per person. On October 1st, the new thrifty food plan increase took effect and the 15% boost did end. Average benefits per person are estimated to be around $251 per month currently. Once the emergency allotments end, benefits are estimated to be around $160, $169 per person per month. Our next slide will talk about emergency allotments. In March 2020, the Federal Families First Coronavirus Response Act was passed in response to COVID-19. Through this, states were given permission to issue supplemental um, emergency allotment SNAP benefits to households who were not receiving the maximum benefit for their household size. The amount of the supplement was dif the difference between the benefit the households normally would receive and the maximum for the household size. States were given permission to issue the supplements as long as the state had either a disaster declaration or a state of emergency in, in effect. As long as the federal public health emergency caused by the pandemic remains in effect, the federal declaration will continue. Um, the federal declaration has been extended through January, which means that the emergency allotments can continue until the end of February, though we are still waiting for official guidance on that. New York has issued these supplemental emergency allotment benefits every month since the, the pandemic began. Um, it's important to note that households do not need to apply for these extra benefits. They should automatically receive their supplemental um, benefits on their EBT card. They don't generally come with SNAP benefits in the beginning of the month. Um, sometimes they come closer to the end of the month. It really depends on the local office. Um, households that are categorically eligible for zero benefits because their income is too high are not considered participating SNAP households, and for purposes of emergency allotment, they will not receive it. 
An important thing to note is that unused SNAP benefits will remain available and accessible on individuals' EBT cards for at least 274 days. So next, we will talk um, about the Elderly Simplified Application Project. Um, this is one of the purposes of the network. Um, we really want to help um, make sure that folks have the correct information about this project. Um, ESAP, the Elderly Simplified Application Project, is expected to be implemented in um, December in New York State. Older individuals, as well as those with disabilities, are underserved groups and may encounter several barriers, as we know, to participation in SNAP. Barriers include limited mobility, inadequate access to electronic equipment, and limited income, which can make it difficult to make ends meet. The verification and paperwork requirements for SNAP may be a hurdle for participation for many as well. Um, effective ESAP projects can help reduce the barriers while also making the administrative process easier for local DSS and HRA offices. Effective ESAPs can help increase SNAP participation among seniors and people living with disabilities, as well as improve the customer experience for vulnerable households and help achieve administrative efficiencies for state agencies. Next slide, please, Jen. So once implemented, um, qualifying seniors can expect to have a shorter two-page SNAP application, as well as an extended 36-month recertification period, and they won't have to endure an interview at recertification time. ESAP only applies to senior households with no earned income. We will be um, providing more information around ESAP um, as it unveils. We are still currently waiting for guidance from OTDA regarding implementation of this project. Oh, yeah. So next we will talk a little bit about um, the New York State Nutrition Improvement Project. We mentioned it earlier as a way to enroll in SNAP benefits for seniors. It is an auto enroll program. Um, it was implemented in 2003. So it automatically enrolls seniors that live alone who receive social security income benefits into SNAP. It eliminates the need for um, SSI income holders to apply separately for SNAP. And it also eliminates the need to provide additional income verification as well as the interview. And it extends the SNAP certification period to 48 months. New enrollees must utilize their benefits within 90 days of their case being opened or it will be closed. OTDA will send a reminder around 60 days if the card has not yet been used. New SNAP recipients under NYSNIP will initially receive the minimum benefit level, which is $20. Participants can fill out and return a short form. It's called the LDSS 4841 and can be found on our website. This form includes questions about shelter and utility costs. The form is included along with the benefit card in the NYSNIP opening notice and benefits may be adjusted to up to the maximum if this form is filled out and returned. Um, NYSNIP might not be the best um, application process to help, to help access SNAP for all seniors. So NYSNIP recipients should ask the SNAP office to do a comparison budget to help them determine whether they re will receive a higher SNAP benefit by using regular SNAP rules or if NYSNIP enrollment is more beneficial. The SNAP office should give NYSNIP recipients the opportunity to opt out. If a person decides to opt out, they will no longer be eligible for the 48 month certification period. Um, and a new application, if they do decide to go through NYSNIP, does not need to be submitted for people who transition from NYSNIP to the regular SNAP program. NYSNIP will be transitioning to the New York State Combined Application Project at some point, but we are still awaiting um, guidance on that. 
So we will be sure to update all of our members through our monthly emails when we do have that information ready to share. Our next slide, we will talk more about SNAP online retailers. The 2014 Farm Bill mandated a SNAP online purchase, purchasing pilot. Um, so households, in order to make online purchases, um, they will go online and use their EBT cards just the same as they would at the store. So they have to enter their PIN um, and SNAP benefits cannot be used for um, delivery fees or service fees or convenience fees, any fees like that. SNAP benefits can only be utilized to purchase food online. And again, folks who do decide to opt to order groceries online with SNAP online retailers will still have to put in their PIN numbers. So we have another poll break for you all. If you could take a moment to answer our poll about topics for future learning. So it looks like about half of our participants have answered. So we'll give this a little bit longer. It's looking like a lot of you are looking for more information about ESAP. I also see a lot of folks looking to improve their outreach as well. Give it just a couple more seconds. It's like we have almost everyone who's been participating, participating. All right, I'm going to end the poll and share the results with everyone. So a lot of folks looking for more information about ESAP, um, as well as improving outreach and some technical assistance, as well as some more information around the medical deduction, um, which, you know, can, it needs to be demystified, I think. So we definitely want to help folks understand that more in future webinars. So thank you for taking the time to answer that. Our next slide is going to be um, a brief animation of what you can expect um, to see on our website. So we created a website for the SNAP and Seniors Professional Network. You can visit snapandseniorsny.org and you can find all sorts of information about seniors and SNAP. A lot of the rules, um, all of the rules that we talked about today, as well as um, how to apply for SNAP, um, our NOAP locator tool and other resources such as the medical deduction worksheet and our newly designed outreach flyer, which we will share next. We will be updating this webpage regularly to include the information we share in our monthly network email updates. If you haven't signed up for network membership, you can do so on our website at snapandseniorsny.org. There should be um, a little box that follows you as you scroll that says join the network on the right hand side. Members can expect to receive monthly email updates as well as invitations to events like this and information about policy changes and resources. Our next slide um, is a share of our new outreach flyer.
Um, I think, I'm not sure if we dropped it in the link already. If we haven't, we will definitely share it with you all so you can look at a, a larger version. I know it can be difficult to see on this screen. Um, but we're really looking to, to garner some feedback on this new outreach flyer. This flyer can be utilized by anyone who is looking to help educate and connect seniors to SNAP. It focuses a little bit more on bringing awareness to the new ESAP rules, such as the shorter application. Um, for feedback, we're looking to um, see how useful this is for the folks that you serve. Um, we want to know if the language and messaging is effective. And we're also interested in learning whether network members would like the option to co-brand this or tailor it to meet their needs. So our next slide is another poll break where we're going to ask you two questions about outreach. If you could all take a moment to answer these questions, that would be great. We'll leave this up for a little bit longer so everyone has an opportunity to answer, but it looks like a lot of you are looking for ways to improve your current outreach efforts, which is great. We really want to help you with that. Um, so the second question asks questions about what types of outreach might be beneficial to the folks that you serve. So I'm going to go ahead and end this poll and share it with you all. So about 91% of you are looking to improve your outreach efforts. Um, and it looks like brochures, flyers, and um, wallet cards can be a helpful resource for you as far as outreach goes. So what are the next steps of the network? We want to continue with these virtual learning events to help support the ESAP rollout, which is expected to take place on December 1st. Um, we also want to hold um, some virtual learning events around medical deductions, as well as outreach best practices. We will be giving um, our webpage some updates. Again, our webpage is snapandseniorsny.org. Our current outreach flyer is up and live on our webpage as well. Um, so those of you who are network members, um, you are signed up to receive uh, network emails. So we're hoping to send out about two emails per month with um, resources and events that we will be hosting, as well as best practices um, and any new guidance that we get on around SNAP and seniors. So that concludes the informational portion of our um, presentation today. So I wanted to open it up for questions. I know there are a lot of questions in the chat um, and I know Sherry is going to help us answer some of those. Great, thank you, Kayla. That was a terrific presentation and I really appreciate everyone's interest and engagement both with your questions in the chat as well as the polling questions um, as well. So why don't we um, touch on a couple of topics that were um, mentioned in the chat. The, the first topic I wanted to go back to was the medical deduction. And um, there was sort of a clarifying question about the, um, you know, how the deduction is calculated. So what I'm gonna share in the chat is a link to a fact sheet that we have produced on medical exemptions or medical deductions and how they're calculated. And 
really the the bottom line here is that the month the average monthly medical expenses are reported in the initial application but they should be updated if they change on a monthly basis but that may not necessarily be the case for every client but the um at the medical deduction is calculated as a monthly average so the worksheet walks you through a little bit of this in more detail and there could be uh, cases where this would be adjusted on a, a frequent basis, but there may be other clients for whom that number wouldn't change and they would stick with the deduction that is in their initial application. So I would just um, advise that this can become somewhat of a complicated issue for clients that do have a lot of medical expenses. And that's where one of our NOAA coordinators can be helpful. Um, and certainly the, the local departments of social services are also able to work on this as well. You know, for some clients, it, it can be very time consuming. So I think that is one of the reasons why we don't see as many clients taking advantage of this deduction, but it may be worth looking at whether or not it would help them receive a little bit of a uh, larger benefit. Um, the question around how far back expenses can be submitted is not one that I'm sure I know the right answer to. So I'm gonna put a pin in that question and we'll get clarification and we'll make sure that we get back to you on that. Jennifer's saying that we think it's six months. So thank you for that, that is helpful. Um, I wanted to also just go back to a question I, uh, around the um, sort of the household convention that, that was used and referenced in the updated benefit package. I think USDA put out sort of a, a framework for, you know, a typical household around, you know, how the uh, updated thrifty food plan benefits were calculated, but it in no way means that um, households with same sex parents or any other type of household that is eligible for SNAP you know, would be negatively impacted at all. It really was just for de demonstration purposes. And, and we did utilize what USDA had sort of laid out in their thinking as well. So we just wanted to clarify that, that, that any household that is eligible for SNAP, regardless of the composition of their members, you know, would benefit from the same uh, configuration of their benefit. Um, I also wanted to just go back and um, clarify uh, a point that was made um, around the simplified application. The simplified two-page application was released as part of our state's Elderly Simplified Application Project, ESAP, but it was released in advance of the rest of the provisions which are rolling out in, in a couple of weeks. Um, so again, a, a client has to meet the eligibility for ESAP in order to be rolled into that uh, program. So the simplified application is for those individuals. It has been made available on paper at the county level, but we are still working through whether or not the online version of the SNAP application mirrors the simplified application for people that sort of meet all the tests all the way through. So when we come back to you in December or January with a more robust presentation on ESAP, we'll be able to sort of walk you through this simplified application and, and how to think about it, where to access it, and who it is meant to help. But we do think in our opinion, that it's the best kept secret right now at the local level because people do have to ask for it in a paper version in order to be able to use it. There is a link to it on our website where it can be printed out and it can be utilized that way as well. And we'll make sure that that's highlighted for you in the follow-up materials. But it is a little bit tricky right now because it technically is available to anyone who qualifies for ESAP, but I don't really think many people would even know that um, because this has not been heavily promoted. So part of our job going forward is to try to help shed more light on this and make this more widely available to people who would benefit from it. Um, so I uh, wanted to also touch back on, um, there seem, I, I see a couple of different um, comments about some additional look back periods on medical deductions. So we'll definitely make sure that we get that clarified for everyone um, as well. Um, I wanted to just say one last thing about um, outreach, and that is that it definitely seems as if everyone would benefit from an enhanced 
you know, collaboration on not only outreach strategies, but outreach materials as well. So what Kayla rolled out to you is a template that we would like to make available for any of you to use, but we will be coming back to you for your feedback about whether or not the messages resonate, um, are there elements of outreach that we could be helpful as a statewide partner in developing for all of you as templates, um, how that, you know, how it looks, how accessible it is, and you know, try to meet the need as much as we can. So we'd encourage you to take a close look at that and let us know what kind of feedback you think would be most helpful to serve your clients with you know, hopefully um, a lot of efficacy and efficiency in using some centralized materials. So we really appreciate everyone's um, ability to, you know, maybe take a look and get some experience with that. So great. So Kayla, those are some of the larger themes that I've seen in the chat. Um, are there any other questions on here that we didn't get to yet? Um, someone had asked why the two-page application will not be available to all older adults. Um, I don't have an answer to that. I don't know if you do, Sherry. Well, it would only be able to be used by someone that meets the, the eligibility criteria for ESAP, which means that they do not have any earned income and they are uh, a definition of a senior for SNAP purposes and they live alone. So not every senior would meet those criteria and therefore they would be required to use the, the standard application. Um, there was a question earlier about household composition and separate SNAP households. Um, I'm going to admit that I'm not an expert on this, but I will say that in the application process, um, a, an application assister like one of our NOAA coordinators can help an applicant decide if apply, if first of all, they meet the eligibility criteria to apply as a separate household from others that they live with. And number two, if that makes sense for them. Um, applicants need to demonstrate that they purchase and prepare their food separately. Um, and if they are elderly or disabled, they would be able to make that application determination, you know, at the time that they fill it out. So for some people that may make sense and it may help that individual receive a larger benefit each month, but um, for the most part, they would need to sort of have their individual case looked at and sort of filtered through the rules to see if that would be something that is appropriate for that case. So again, that would be a case by case, but it is an option for certain households and it may be beneficial to that particular applicant. Did everyone just hear my dog chiming in on all of this as well? Great. Um, there's a request here to post the income chart that was shown earlier in the presentation and that will be made prominent on our website and we'll make a note to link that for everyone uh, going forward. And we'll have those um, income categories laid out so that everyone can use those. Great. Uh, have you seen any other questions, Kayla, that we should get to? I haven't seen any that we haven't answered. I'm scrolling through the messages. Um, but if anyone has any questions, um, if you want, you can raise your hand and I can certainly um, allow you to ask. We have a couple more minutes here. Any other questions from any folks? All right, I think we're all set. Well, thank you all again for joining us today. I think this was a successful first virtual event. I look forward to interacting um, with many of you throughout this project. Um, again, if you haven't signed up for the network, you can do so at www.snapandseniorsny.org. Thank you all for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.